Hello everybody, I'm Paul Ducklin. We're back for another Naked Security Live. Straight over to Alice, who's behind the camera and is going to grill me with this week's questions. Hi guys, yep, so welcome along. Do remember to comment your questions below and we will try and answer them live. And if we don't get round to them today, we will always get back to you. Um, so Doug, you've written a, a story all about ransomware and how you can be affected by someone else's ransomware, which sounds unlikely. So can you just explain that? Yes, you'd think, okay, I've got a, I've got a brand new up-to-date antivirus. It can detect every known threat. I've scanned my computer. There's no sign of ransomware, so I can't get affected. Unfortunately, as our chums over at the Bleeping Computer website have recently reported, they've had a number of reports of ransomware that they've called, uh, I don't know quite how you say it, nam poor hue uh, That's how it uh, announces itself when you connect to its web page to pay the money to get your files back. And what they've generally seen with people who are reporting this particular ransomware attack is the ransomware is not on their computer. The crooks are running it on somebody else's computer or on a sacrificial laptop somewhere else on the internet. And they're programming this computer to reach out, the ransomware to reach out over the internet and actually attack and scramble their files remotely. So they're getting affected by the ransomware even though they are not themselves infected. And yes, this can happen if you make a security blunder. And can you tell me how you could actually be leaving your computer vulnerable online? Well, that is the $64,000 question. You know, how can it be that you say you've got a Windows laptop, you're at home, you plug it into your home router, surely it's protected because the router's got a firewall in it. Well, the problem is that what can happen is, firstly, you might get stuck behind the router and find that there are some things that don't work. So you unplug yourself from the secure side of the router and plug yourself temporarily into the insecure side just to see if the problem fixes itself. During that period, of course, you're exposed to the internet. And another thing that is we see very commonly is many home routers, mine certainly has it, have a feature called the DMZ, Demilitarized Zone. And that's a button you can press where you identify one computer on your network at home that is going to be, say, your server or your gaming system. And basically, you're telling the router, hey, open this thing up to the whole, everything on this computer up to the internet because I expect it to be a server. Now, it's not supposed to be used for things like file servers and for storing your own stuff. It's actually meant generally intended for gaming servers, but we've seen cases where people are trying to run, say, a new game on their laptop, they can't get it to work, they try pressing this magic button that exposes their laptop to the internet, the game starts working, and they think, hey, I fixed the problem, and they end up leaving themselves in a position where they have a firewall, their laptop is behind the firewall, but there's a gaping hole in the firewall that allows the crooks to come wandering through. So it's not supposed to happen, but you can easily and accidentally get yourself in a situation where the crooks can find you, and once they find you, they're going to come looking to see what they can do next. And attacking you with ransomware turns out to be one of those things. Great, thank you. So you've um, gone into detail in your article about some of the tips that can help people stay safe from this. Can you tell us what they are? I can. I've written them down here just in case, and I've, I've tried to keep them alliterative as usual so they're easy to remember, and I've called this lot the four R's. The first one is pick robust passwords. Remember that if you have file sharing turned on on your Windows computer to connect to the shares that you've created, generally speaking, the crooks will need to know your password. And if they want to be able to write to your files, they might even need to know your administrator password. So make it a good one. Because remember that if a crook can reach into your network and scramble all your files with ransomware, what they could have done instead is reach into your network, download all your files quietly, leave no trace behind, close the door and go away. And now you've suffered a data breach that you cannot possibly reverse. So number one of the four R's, pick robust passwords. Secondly, make sure you have a real firewall in place. If you've got a home router that includes firewall functionality, make sure it's working and that you haven't accidentally or deliberately bypassed the firewall to get something working under test circumstances on your laptop and then forgotten to turn that feature off. The third thing is make sure you have a running antivirus. Even though you haven't got the actual malware on your computer in this case, a good antivirus for example, uh, Sophos Home can do this for you. It can detect the behavior of ransomware attacking your files and actually head it off at the pass 
even if the ransomware is, isn't running on your computer. So don't buy a dog and try and bark yourself if you like. If you've got a security solution, make sure it's running and it's doing what you expect. And the last of the four R's is make regular backups. Nothing protects you better from the aftermath of a ransomware attack than being able to restore your files from, say, a USB drive of your own that you keep in the cupboard somewhere. That's way, way better than having to negotiate and pay $1,000, $2,000 to the crooks in the hope that you might possibly get your data back. So there you are, the four R's. I'll go through them again. Robust passwords, real firewalling, a running security solution, and regular backups. Perfect, thank you. Excellent advice, Dirk. So I think that's all for today. Oh no, there's one more thing. Um, because you can have uh, a May pole, you can have a Yuletide log, you can have a Christmas tree. So why should you not have an Easter bush? <laughs> and there we have our very own, that's the Sophos Labs Easter tree. I borrowed it from the top of their coffee machine. So have a great long weekend, everybody, if you're getting time off. And if you are online, stay secure. Thanks, guys. Happy Easter. Bye. Bye.